Hello and welcome to my channel Coding Environment. In today's video, we are going to explore different types of architecture used in software development along with their advantages and disadvantages. So, a software architecture refers to the overall architecture of a software system and how its components fit together. Choosing the right architecture for your software is important for its scalability, maintainability and overall success. So let's get started. So in this video, we are going to see four different types of architecture mostly used in the software industry. So the first one is the monolithic architecture followed by microservices architecture. After that, we are going to cover event driven architecture. And then we are going to cover service oriented architecture commonly known as SOA. So what is monolithic architecture? So if you see any, any software which we have designed, it will usually have one user interface and then there will be some business logic. This business logic will be mostly connected with a database access layer and this database access layer will be connected to a database. So you can see there are three or four different components in this uh, monolithic architecture. One is the user interface. Second one is business logic where all the most of the coding we do. And then data access layer is used to access the DB or the persistence layer of that software. And that's how it's been designed, right? Now you can see here all these three or four interfaces are tightly coupled and make one complete software. So you can see there is no loosely coupling in these modelers like user interface, business logic or data access layer. They're all tightly coupled in this case. So if I have to say what is monolithic architecture? So monolithic architecture is an approach to building software where the entire application is built as a single indivisible unit. So all these units are indivisible. They are tightly coupled to each other. So what is the main advantage of the monolithic architecture? So monolithic architecture or monolithic uh, softwares are based on an idea that software is a single entity with no modularization. It is a single indivisible unit. And the main advantage of this monolithic architecture is to easy to build, straightforward, easy to maintain easy to deploy and uh, develop because there is no uh, like multiple units will be there which will be talking to each other and the design is pretty simple in this case and also it is very cost effective. When it is coming to the disadvantages of this monolithic architecture, the main disadvantage of this monolithic architecture is that it's very difficult to scale. So if you are making a small software which has not more functionality and you are not seeing any uh, like you are not trying to scale that software, it is good to go for a monolithic architecture. But if you're trying to trying to scale or trying to increase the features of that particular software, it's very difficult. And uh, the second is like if any change you are doing in, in this application, you have to rebuild the whole application and then deploy it also. The third main disadvantage of this architecture is its poor fault tolerance. Moving to the next architecture, which was the microservice architecture. So as the name itself suggests, it's a microservice, right? So in this case, suppose if you're trying to implement a software, which will have a user interface and you have a like not one or two, you have a, like four to five uh, or not only four to five, it can have like multiple features. What you can do is you can divide that features one uh, as a one unit and try to implement that one unit independently. So in this case, if you are seeing here, what we have done is like this one microservice one can show you that this is one feature. Again, this microservice two can show you that this is the uh, like second feature of that particular application. So what we can do is like we can divide that whole application into the microservices or you can say that each services is used to implement one feature. Of course, this, all these services will talk to each other using the exposed REST API or any interface. And also these services have their own persistence layer. So here it's not like that microservice two and three will be, will be sharing the same uh, database or the persistence layer. So each microservices will have their own persistent layer and they will talk independently to 
uh, user interface also if you see like if you want to make any change in this microservice one you don't have to touch or you don't have to go and deploy or rebuild this other microservices so it is like the main advantage of this particular uh, architecture is that you can deploy or you can develop one microservices which is totally independent to each other so let's come back to the advantage and disadvantage of this micro uh, microservice architecture the main advantage of this microservice architecture is it's loosely coupled all the services are loosely coupled to each other and can be independently developed other advantage of this microservice architecture is it's highly scalable so suppose tomorrow if you want to add one more feature what you can do is you can create one more microservice and you can deploy in the same environment so that this uh, this microservice 6 can also communicate to other microservices also one of the main advantage is its fault tolerance so suppose what you can do is you can create multiple copies of the same microservices or what you can do is you can you can deploy one mic microservices in one virtual machine and the other microservices in the other virtual machine and those those are like uh, if one is going down what we can do is we can use the second one for its like fault tolerance so uh, if i have to show you let me let me see uh, let me show you how we can do that so suppose uh, suppose i have i have to deploy one uh, this microservice microservice 4 so what i can do i can create one dev vm or two dev vms and my user interface is here so this is my user interface and this user interface will be connected to both the dev vms so this is this is one vm vm1 and this is vm2 now what we can do is like there is this microservice 4 right so you can assume that this microservice 4 i can deploy here also and this microservice 4 i can deploy here also so one of the one of the vm or one of the microservice will act as a like passive passive and the other one will be active so in this case suppose if my this dev vm is going down for any reason or my this microservice my this microservice is going down for any reason my second vm2 will be coming will become active and this will serve the purpose of this microservice so here you can see how easily we can we can maintain this fault tolerance into this microservice architecture this is totally not possible in the case of the monolithic architecture where all the systems like user interface business logic uh, db layer and even the db was in the single entity so this all thing we have to deploy on a single vm and if this vm is going down everything will go down right so this is this this architecture this microservice architecture allows us to do this fault tolerance in a very very good manner and also if any change in the code like if any change in this microservice 4 code happens we don't have to go and build this whole application and deploy it on the uh, production or anywhere like where we want to deploy so this is one of the main advantages of the microservices as the video is getting lengthy i will try to cover the event driven architecture and service oriented architecture in the next video if you like this video and understood what is monolithic and microservice architecture you can like this video and subscribe to this channel till then have a great day and goodbye